Alright, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the RuneScape Chronicle Community Cup. Again, this is a community-hosted event featuring some of RuneScape Chronicle's first ever competitive players. Of course, the game's still in closed beta, and uh, lots of things to come, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Two, one, let's go. Alright, so loading in on our first game in this best of five series, Interjection. That is me versus Rom the NG, and I'm uh, loading in with the deck that I built... Uh, this is one attack Ariane, which is not a new idea, but uh, this is a deck that is very, very streamlined, I like to think, and is one I actually climbed. This is post-fishing troll enough. The second it was nerfed, I made this, and I edited it on stream, and I climbed 45 ranks, prestige ranks, in a day with this deck. So uh, I like to think that uh, it's a good deck, or perhaps people weren't ready for... See, yeah. I'm seeing a pretty interesting mulligan coming out from you here, Dejection. Uh, mm -hmm. Could you explain to the viewers why you've decided to mulligan Fern? I don't find yeah. it particularly useful in this matchup because there's really not very many big creatures. Uh, against but things like Dust Devils? I do regret not keeping it and putting it in slot one there to grief a potential Dust Devil. I am actually thinking about Dust Devil right now because I know if I put that Sergeant Slime Toes in slot one, if he Dust Devils me, I'll use both the durability using on that Haunted Soul. And it was the right yeah. call. There does There is a Dust Devil coming out. But uh, Fern, you know, absolutely would have not made, you know, the effect wouldn't have resolved at all and it would have been an excellent card to keep. And uh, I, it was a mistake, absolutely. And you're, you know, absolutely right to point that out. Yeah, we're seeing for these decks fairly standard openings. Um, Slime Toes is really nice. He is such a powerful card right now. And yeah, the Dust Devil again, very standard for an opening for a Griefing Linzer, yeah. which I'm not too surprised to see. It is going to make that Slime Toes do a nice little bit of damage to you. That's going to be 10 HP going off there. You get two armor back, but still not ideal. Yeah, I do take ten so, damage yeah. there, uh, but you know, I would rather I'd rather this. Like I, in this matchup, I really don't care what my help, my life total is because yeah, I when don't you're expect... playing this sort of Ariane, the only number on the screen that matters is your opponent's health. Yeah, that's wow. this. I like to zerg. It's that really down. the only relevant number. So, and I, I mean, a ring of recoil is a really nice touch there. I do like that. Yeah, I uh, could have played it earlier um, to. to... You know, potentially before he buffed his attack, but you know, quite uh, not a little bit insignificant, really. But see, here Doric coming out, and I was a little bit afraid at the moment because Doric would. Doric be, is a nice card. Yeah, yeah, very. You know, eight health difference for three gold. You know, a net of eight. Like it's, it's quite. A, you know, you get your money's worth there. And in this particular matchup, that's. Uh, I was thinking, but you know, if he was aggressive, and uh, we're going to see strikes or something coming out with him, you know, I'm in a bad spot right now. You know, with Doric's yeah, and stuff. Absolutely. In the deck. But, uh, uh, I I saw a Dust Devil and. Um, it, you know, it puts me at one attack. I'm not too unhappy about that. Uh, but, but yes, going into chapter two. Okay. So it's, we're oh. actually seeing Cabbage in this Rom. Yeah. Rom I was going to say Rom. Yeah, Rom the Engine. We are seeing Cabbage in the deck, which is an interesting one. You don't often yeah. see Cabbage oh, too I much. was not happy to Love see long. Cabbage. Uh, I thought at this point, <laughs> this this deck was uh, what I've self-titled uh, Clown Fiesta Linzer, which just runs far too many heals and has no win conditions other than out-healing the opponent, and I was quite worried that that was what this is. Uh, but that Wilderness there was Well, wow, you're taking... Yeah, that Wilderness is huge. That's a massive clutch Wilderness. Yep. This is the power of battles. When people are like, oh, I don't like battle, it makes you take damage. It's like, yeah, you can also smash weapons and make this happen. Yeah, and which is Customs huge. Officer, which and I'm I guessing that we're going to see this Infernal Mage. I'm guessing that's an Infernal Mage up there. It is. Yep. We are going to see that actually wrap out the game. It is, yeah. It's going to um, deal the lethal damage unless needed. We've got, unless we've got a heal in this next slot from Rom here. But I imagine we don't. No. Because no. that. Nope. No, absolutely nothing. So that Infernal Mage is going to make it 1 0 to Interjection with his 1 attack Ariane deck against a Griefing Linzer who perhaps got griefed herself a little bit there by that Wilderness. <laughs> Clutch Wilderness. Uh, no, and please, I'm, not saying, got... I'm not saying that's what Griefing Linzers deserve, but <laughs> yes. So yep. <laughs> we are going to see that Infernal Mage take it to 1 0 Interjection. Yeah, and notably, I got both the. Uh... Both my wildernesses were with Sergeant Slime Toes weapon, which is I thought was was interesting. But yeah, that is game number one going to me. Sorry, three, two, one. Let's go. All right, game number two in this uh, best of five series. My next deck is is Ozan, by the looks of it, and then hopefully Ozan mirror match. Hopefully an interesting Ooh. Ozan as well. This is a bit of an interesting isn't coming out from Rom here. I can't quite figure it out from the... Uh... Is that Troll Chucker? It is. That is Troll Chucker. And a Dagonal oh. Fledgling and an Ozan. So this is an, this is an interesting Ozan deck. I'm kind of excited to see what we see here. Because this looks 
very standard as it is, and I'm not quite sure if this is going to have what's needed to carry a victory at this level of play. I'm quite interested that you kept Bandit Camp as well. I really don't understand what this Ozan is. I mean, there's a Ring of Karos in there as well, which is a uh, didn't seem to sync up with any other card that we've seen yet. So, I mean, I mean the Nastroth is fairly nice. I yeah, because of the Nastroth. Yes, yeah. but like three base attack on an Ozan, kind of yay. But uh, yeah. Yeah, nice I mean, who knows? They, they might pull something mad out of their hat here. Like this is one of the best things. I, I literally don't know what to expect from this Ozan deck. Yeah, I think so, at this point the Ozan deck is. It looks like it's got you know fairly efficient cards in it, composed of efficient cards, and that seems yeah. to be the strategy uh, at the moment, at least as well. I just I don't think. know how they. I don't know how they uh, meld together. There doesn't seem too much synergy with the cards I've seen so far. But this yeah, is when this is I true. imagine there's going to be things like God Swords or something in here because of those Definitely. Ring of Karas, to kind of those uh, dual tournaments and stuff like that. So at, we'll have to see. Yeah, looking at Injection's hand as well, I believe it's a gold zone. Am I right? You are absolutely right. And that's why I'm running Black Arm Bandit. I'm not a huge fan of the card yeah. because it doesn't do a very much, but it is safe gold game that you don't take very much damage. You know, I'm already running two of these gnome guards, so I'm adding yeah. two Black Arm Bandits as well just for extra gold. So this is a Lingley Assassin deck. Yeah, this is a uh, this is a Young Money Productions deck because you're already <laughs> going into that second chapter with 10 gold, which is pretty nice. I imagine that we're going to see... Something like a safe spot in a Damascus Temple Guard or something coming out. Because if you start doubling this gold up, it's going to get scary. Yeah, but uh, out of ROM here, I see a Black Arm Bandit and a Nastroth, I believe, and a, and a battle. So I'm not quite sure what I'm up against. Um, and that's, you know, that's frightening because there really could be any cards, uh, particularly one in his hand that's uh, quite good against Gold Zen, right? Yes, yeah, there is a little card that regardless of the strength of this deck overall, might spell a problem Yeah, here. Black oh. Abandoned oh, Camp. Oh, he's kind of going for it too early. Like, yeah. uh, you should really recognize that this is a Gold Zan deck and just keep it in there. Yeah, that until Bandit you Camp. See him. Realistically, he shouldn't be playing that until it will kill you. Yeah, but he, he might not know say. what the theme of the deck is yet. I mean, I've opened with yeah. quite a lot of gold, but at this point, you know, I haven't played any huge giveaway cards like... Um, Re, um, you look mummy or desert strike worms or anything like that uh, but you know I, yeah. I saw it on the board and I was like holy crap that is a, that is a frightening card and I'm you know thank god he played it early because that just one hit kill me for those of you who don't know bandit camp says rival loses health equal to half their gold and I'm looking here to stack up you know potentially a hundred gold and something <laughs> something like that which so, is a little problematic even Vanescua can survive that yeah and but, I, uh... <laughs> the new the new hero well, like there is going to be some fun stuff from Vanescular with health. But um, yeah, so we're seeing a donation. Donation is one of the best cards in the game, in my opinion. I so powerful. I think it's good and bad. I'm not. I don't think it's the best card it's, in the game. I think it's, I definitely... think it's the best. I think it's it's top tier though. Donation is an amazing card. You can't. Argue I can agree with, with being top tier right? and uh, zero for zero gold. Uh, but um, what was I going to say? I don't know. I, I think I. Never mind. Yeah, Bandit Camp, right? <laughs> I, I've seen it come out, but I'm worried maybe there's a second one in the deck. It's quite possible that he runs, you know, people often run cards in pairs. So uh, this whole game, I'm just like, oh, God, this is uh, this is absolutely <laughs> not something I was hoping for at all. Yeah. I'm, well, this ROMS deck here, I, I'm... It's very I'm interesting. Not mean, but I literally don't know what's going on with this deck. Like... There's seeing... an adamant armor in there? Like, uh, what? Like, I don't know. There doesn't seem to be clearly defined goals in this deck. And that yeah. can work. But you need it to work by setting mini goals. Like, you might want to do two or three card combos. In this, I'm not really seeing much synergy amongst any of the cards. I mean, Desert Snake and Dagon of Fledgling. Okay, that's a nice little move. Yeah, but I agree. But other than that, I don't particularly see any strong strategy, essentially, coming out of this deck. Which makes me feel really mean. So I'm so he's in the chat. Sorry, I'm you know, sure you're, right? lovely. you're lovely, uh, but this is not a lovely deck so far. Yeah, <laughs> I think the Rom's strategy is to confuse an ejection. <laughs> well, Bandit Camp's certainly working. It doesn't matter what his deck is doing. It's the, uh... the dazing deck. <laughs> yeah, but. Uh... Yeah, at this point, what am I thinking? I've got this weapon. I've got the seven one weapon. I want to kill that desert strike one with it. It's the biggest card I can use. I only run one one SGS, and that is actually a replacement for Kale because I can't run a, a diamond cuts. So that goes to show I how mean, much I value Kale. The thing, the thing is that if he's running bandit camps in here, I don't know if there's a second one in this deck. If he is, yeah, he can win this. 
yeah, for he, one card. It's you know, it's absolutely it's the potential there, and I'm thinking, you know, I can't, I'm so, I can't I'm not honestly, do my I'm strategy. Surprised you tanked that customs officer, knowing that bandit camps were around. Well, I figured if he has a bandit camp, I lose anyway. So <laughs> that's a very good point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to go for it, and you know, ban I do manage to get quite a lot of gold out of the customs officer. I think it's an excellent card, considering there's two pyramid plunders and donations in this deck, which gives them you know so much gold that and then I just steal yeah, it back. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, equipping the D long there and uh, heading into the Amscat Mystic. So you know, at the end of the turn, yeah, I do Amscat Mystic is a very very nice card. So it's I knew very... I'd take damage, but equally, you know, by the time he gets to go, oh, he's low on health. I'll play my Bandit Camp. I'm back to full HP because you know. I you did see, it and interestingly my enough, chapter. because of the uh, sort of you know really one combo based nature of your deck, yeah. we're actually seeing Rom on some pretty nice stats here, like. Yeah. Four base attack, eight gold, full health, and five armor. Like, that's yeah. nice stats to have. Like, you can do almost anything you want to do around that. So, actually, we could see Ron pull something out here. Yeah, he's definitely. got Desert Snakes, he's got Troll Chuckers, he's got Garajos. Theoretically, like, ignoring the upcoming enormous Ling combo that I'm fairly <laughs> confident is going to happen, yep. theoretically, he's actually in a nice position right now. So, yeah, I'll be interested to see what comes out of this. We oh. go. Absolutely. You know, with four base attack, it's far more than I'm going to be capable of getting and bringing into the final fight. Yeah, I might have a weapon, but, uh, you know, good stats, absolutely. And, uh, it, you know, at this point, let's uh, let's take a look at what I'm doing. I'm thinking, should I play the Ling here? And uh, I feel like it's a bit too soon. I want to, you know, get perhaps a... Wait, what am I I definitely thinking? agree with that. I mean, yeah, you're I dealing, what, 28 damage? Yeah, I think you I end up playing donation. About... I think I think I know why it is, but for people watching, they might not maybe understand why. Would injection? Would you like to explain the inclusion of fishing controller in your deck? Uh, against aggressive matchups, uh, so I usually have plenty of gold, and I can always get fishing trawler out early, and that's just one way to beat the you know the aggro decks. The, the monkfish there, I forget about the gold, and they often zerg themselves down anyway. You know, Ariane does that. Yeah. And you know, I just out heal them, and I've got the Amscap Mystics in there as well. This deck can tank aggressive decks. Should you find the trawler, it's not as consistent as like some Raptor decks out there with lots of heals. But certainly the fishing trawler is you know safe bet there, and the monkfish you know can be very very useful in some matchups. You don't get nearly as much gold over the course of the game, but still enough to to do like twenty damage or ten damage with the Absolutely. language, which yep. can be the finisher. Yeah, but uh, here gonna double my gold because uh, you know I need to use this weapon up. Uh, it's worth pointing out, I'd be quite low. I'd be I'd be almost dead if uh, if he did manage to grief the weapon. Um, I'm surprised that actually that I put that uh, that guy at the end of the chapter there. <laughs> it I, is a brave move. It's a very brave move to do that at the end of the chapter, especially when donation wouldn't have affected it. Yeah, but exactly. You could save yourself a slot of risk by not playing that at the end. Yeah, this is true. I will we'll play it sooner, you know, or we'll, we'll play it safe and only use up one durability in slot one. Yeah. And, and see if I carry it through to the next round. I am going first. I'd have the flexibility to play the uh, Temple Guard chapter slot one this chapter, and uh, you know that because I'm going first, I can do that. I'd get away with that if I was able to carry through weapon durability. But uh, go away with that risk. And here I do find the second guard, and that's going to double my gold up to over a hundred. Uh, I'm, 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 I am going to have to equip a D long to, to kill it because I don't want to face tank that. Absolutely. Uh, and then I imagine we're probably going to see the Ling come out after that. Uh, I'm not seeing a Bandit Camp in Rom's hand, so I. I don't think it's too brave to say I imagine this is the end of our brave engineer. Yeah. Actually, but... I actually remember my thought process. The reason I put it at the end of that chapter was because I thought, you know, I don't want to give him the opportunity with the with the bandit camps. Oh, wait, no, that's not right. Something about bandit camp. <laughs> I, <don't know>. <laughs> <laughs> I Bandit camp, bandit camp, bandit camp. But okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, unfortunately, so... this is going to be the end of Rom. In what is otherwise, like, because essentially one of the best things about Goldzan is other than giving you some gold, it essentially leaves you alone for the entire game, perhaps even healing you through those fishing trawlers. So it's actually quite nice for something like a Ramp Raptor or something, if you can do something to disrupt that gold game, like with a Red Beard Frank or something. However, in this case, he's going to take his very nice stats and unfortunately die with them, yeah, I imagine. 53 damage or something. quite so. a lot of gold coming up here. Yep. And so this is going to be the end, and it is always a bit of a pain to die when you're on max health, but... Bandit yeah. camp was played far too early. It would have been a free win later on. It would have been. And the, the combo nature of this deck is if you do leave it alone, it does what it wants. And I've hit over 300 yeah. gold before. I've done over, I think I did 154 damage in a single slot, bearing in mind that deck oh, wow. did run Party Hat and Yelps. Uh, but oh. 
This, you know, obviously this doesn't because you're not allowed diamond cards, but still 50 damage going to be absolutely fine uh, to kill him now. I'm going to pick up the win. Uh, but worth pointing out, this deck is very easy to counter with, you know, lots of tech cards like Varrock, oh, yeah. Guard, like uh, like the, what, the Bandit Camp that we mentioned, and also just ordinary decks like the Raptor currently with the strikes in it. Don't let me, don't let this deck just sit around and do nothing because don't, don't let it do what it wants to do. Absolutely. So that is going to be 2-0, two, 2 interjection. Yep. For, yeah, from that game, I, like I say, there, there wasn't enough of a strong theme in that Ozan deck that we saw from Rom. Um, I think that's all that Stephanie needs to maybe be taken back to the drawing board. Individually, it was composed of very high value, very good cards, which can in itself be a strong theme for a deck. But that tends to be more something to aim for with Raptor also. With Ozan, I find that you definitely need at least mini strategies that you want to go for. Otherwise, you're not particularly going to see much success. I think so. <laughs> Him before well. an ejection draws pie hat. Yeah. Ling created a strategy that revolved around trying to defeat your opponent in one turn without any requiring any cards, etc., etc. Makes an overall game of Hearthstone more fun and compelling. There we go. I had to say that so they'd stop. Thanks. We did it, Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's game number two, Goldzan. All right, so are you guys ready for number three? I think it might be loud, so give me just a second to check. Yep. Yeah, it is loud. So, right, give me, this won't take nearly as long as it did before. All right. So, Merchant, what do you think of Rom's chances then? Since an injection um, has both used his... Honestly, I, I'm going to take off my CM hat and put on my analyst hat for a second. Um... I think that Rom is potentially outclassed here. You think so? Yeah. If I'm if I'm brutally honest, I think he is potentially outclassed. I can see this being three O. You think um, it being three O? I think I think it. Yeah. Well, I, I, I unfortunately, I, yeah, we can see the amount of games, so you yeah. can figure it out. I, I, if, if I couldn't see the amount of games, I would guess it being three O. Um, <laughs> purely because yeah, he seems to be a little bit outclassed as a player here. Which is fine. I mean, you know, Interjection is one of the most experienced players in the game. He's, yeah, he's going to have an advantage over a lot of players. All right, we're heading into game number three. I've got it ready. And uh, are you guys ready in three, two, one? Let's go. All right, game number three in this best of five series between Rom, the NG, and uh, myself. So score is currently 2-0 in my favor. This is match point for me. Uh, I'm taking a Linzer deck into this final game. And... Linzer against Raptor is, I would argue, Linzer's worst matchup. With this deck, I'd have... answer it's one of its better matchups, in my experience with this deck. <laughs> uh, uh, well, but we'll this have is, to see in that case. This is a very specific deck that has one game plan that is uh, about building a big weapon over several chapters and then striking with Kalgur and uh, things like Wilderness and things like... Uh, well, it used to be Tokash, but the nerf changed that, so I can't do that anymore. And Pulverize is certainly a big big factor in this deck. Sadly, though, I can't run some of the, the you know, gold-gaining cards that I'd like to, like Yelps, which, mm. you know, was in this deck. Yeah. And a lot of the quick gold-gaining cards that are, you know, don't interact with weapons, like, I can't run L.A. Morrisane in this, because if I draw it late, it's not useful. So, yeah. I, you know, yeah. That makes sense. Some interesting facts there, I notice, is he's got Dr. Frankenstein in his opening hand. You don't yeah, generally see that Raptor. interesting card. I quite like it myself. I actually think it's quite a powerful Raptor card that people maybe misunderestimate a little bit. You can really catch people out with it. Purely because, well, one of the large reasons that you can catch people out with it is because it's not particularly popular at the moment. So actually, really, it can be unexpected, which is actually really quite a good... Like, being unexpected is one of the best qualities of a card. Definitely. With Dr. Frankenstrain. I really like that card, especially against Ariane. I run it in actually quite a lot of Linzer decks or decks generally that yeah. don't like Ariane because, you know, if they enfeeble or bunyip down their creatures, suddenly you, you bring that Infernal Mage up back to three attack. And if they have one attack, they'll take 27 damage from their from their Infernal Mage, which can sometimes randomly steal games. And Dr. Frankenstrain, really good gold draw on it, three gold, so can't yeah. argue with that. I do get hit uh, for three extra damage on my White Wolf, though, which is not good. And I have two of them, so sacrificing a lot of life early on here. But I'm okay with doing that. White Wolf, very efficient card. Uh, you get two gold and two card draw in the same Yeah, slot. White Wolf is a really nice card. I, I saw somebody the other day complain that White Wolf is useless, and I was just like, you need to play more Chronicle. Yeah, absolutely. White it's Wolf one of the best is anything cards. but. It is one of the best cards. Yeah, it's a top tier. Yeah, especially for new players that don't have a big collection, I think White Wolf is probably the best card you own if you've only just signed up for Chronicle. 
I would pretty thoroughly agree with that, yeah. I'd say White sure Wolf well. is a... a White Wolf along with Void Brawler is and KGP Agent. There's actually, there's a lot of basic there's, cards that are really very strong, which I do like. Yeah, and you see them in all the competitive deck, KGP Agent yeah, and lots of others especially. Absolutely. But here, no, which is really I, nice. I didn't play my Chaotic Longsword at the end of that chapter. You know, I didn't want to take it through. I didn't want to go face up with a sword because I, you know, I, he, he would then see that and uh, he could play his griefing cards should he had it. And yeah. you know, he could still potentially think, all right, nine gold, one attack on the Linzer, uh, you, you know, then my, my strategy kind of becomes more apparent. I don't value my attack because I got it down with the sheep. And, you know, the weapons are actually absolutely the main focus of this. So he could potentially yeah. kill it, but I don't think we see we anything. We see the tech card oh, I do. mentioned previously. There it is. Help my emissary. Yeah. It's such a powerful card against the Linzer. Yep. And actually, it looks like this might destroy you. Yeah, it's coming out. Is oh, going is he going to play it? Is he going to play it? That slot oh. two is where it needs to go. Oh, it's slot it three. To go slot it's going to oh, be too late because I've got... not going to do it. Yeah. Oh, but... oh that's, that's heartbreaking to see. That is the perfect example of hindsight being amazing. Yeah, I could have been punished. I don't know why he wouldn't have slot two that because you've got nine gold. You you were gonna buy a god sword or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even a Katsu katana that would take down. Yeah. That really should have been slot two in my opinion. Um, you know, yeah. There's there's no reason that shouldn't have been slot two. But but I think that's a bit of a misplay in my opinion. It's still going to hurt me quite a lot, though, with this deck. You know, yes, it's, it's not a dead hurt. weapon. It is still going to hurt, but it would have been huge it if you hit it. Yeah, it would have been. Because you Workshop would have done nothing. Yeah, seven. I'd pay for them, yeah. absolutely. And But, you know, it still is worth pointing out. It does a lot of damage uh, to me because it the, getting going, I need lots of durability, and I'm building that up yeah. over several turns as this deck. But, uh, you know, lots of damage coming out from Rom there. Yeah, the Troll the Chucker, the Dorix yeah, at the end. Yeah, 3 HP. I mean, Mimic is just such a high card. He can yeah. bash you and kill you now. He can, he yeah. Absolutely. And Go I was bash. not expecting these uh, these cards in his deck. You know, these aggressive cards. I really wasn't yeah. anticipating. This is a really interfering Raptor. This is actually quite a nice Raptor deck. And there's the bash. There is the bash. And that is going to be game. Yeah. Bash comes oh, he out. He's going first. For uh, Oozing Calphite does the same it. thing, there's, though. There's no gold. There's no gold. Oh, this he is needs true. to nickel and then bash. Yeah, but Oozing Calphite oh. does uh, four damage to me, and he's going first, so it, it's still lethal. Oh, yeah, yeah. it's still lethal. There oh, we go. Yeah, yeah. He still oh, that shows it. how much I use that card. I never use it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah I was not that? expecting these aggressive cards in this matchup. I thought, you know, Rap Linzer nice versus Raptor going into that, I felt very pleased. It's like, dude, you've won, just hit play. But, um, <laughs> yeah, that is, uh, that is going to be 2 1 to Rom, and Rom might it be is, pretty. Yeah. He might be on track for proving me wrong here, so... Yep. Well, Ron takes that game. Putting the score back 2-1, yeah, as you yeah. said. So I was pretty sad about this, because, you know, I personally do think this matchup is is in my favour, because, I you know, get this massive weapon and... Uh... I just think the amount of weapon manipulation, I can never say that it's in Linzer's favour. Yeah. Raptor v Linzer. There's yeah. so much removal, like, right? But a lot yeah, of decks don't run it currently. Like, the current Raptor that's I mean, popular by... Of, the, you know why it is? The, a lot of decks are pretty greedy right now. But I think so there's a lot of Ariane running around. My video. And, <laughs> but, um, and, uh, she doesn't run yeah. very many weapons at all. So it's, and it's, yeah, it's, I think it a lot of Raptor decks are quite greedy at the moment. If they actually start taking more cards, they'll realise that. They can yeah. just but if you can play this deck safely, you know, without you know encountering tech cards, the agenda that Linzer has can do so much damage. You get that Pulverize, you can easily do like 13 damage with a Pulverize, you know. With those yeah. Weapon Masters that grant plus five, it's, it, I, th I feel like that deck is very, very strong, but... Uh, oh yeah, I think it's a very strong deck. Yeah. Yeah, but the Calfoy Emissary and uh, the Bash that he did have in his deck absolutely would have destroyed me had he drawn them earlier. And still, he picks up the win out of that, so a uh, nice job to Ron. Bringing the score up, as you mentioned, to 2-1 uh, to one in. Still in my favor, but certainly shaping up to be a better series. <laughs> So worth pointing out, Rob is also level nine as Raptor. There. So you got you got trashed by a level nine Raptor. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's worth pointing out that at at the time of recording, my Raptor is level four, I think, or level five. <laughs> That's pretty heroic. I don't play Raptor at all. I have been recently in preparation for future rounds of the tournament. You know, should I get there? But because I, I feel like you'd need to have that that all the classes available to you to do well. But Raptor, yeah, I think not not my uh, not my class. You can see on my stats, not enough data. <laughs> All right, so game number four. Yep. All right, ready? In three, two, one, let's go. All right, game number four in this best of five series between myself and Rom the NG. Here I'm queuing up with Linza. The same Linza or perhaps a different one? We will see. We will see. And we're going to see Rom playing Ariane. So yeah. Linza 
quite strong against Ariane, usually, if I'm honest. The lack of armor and the lack of, you know, unless we're running Heffins or like, well, there is a Heffin in hand. Unless they're running Heffins or other big heals, Linda can be very, very problematic. Right? Some interesting cards in Rom's hand, including the Ogre Brute and, uh, and Ariane. Yeah, yes. I feel like you can just slam that in sometimes. As yeah, just I, a... I agree. Uh, like, yeah, it... I think Ogre Brute is it's a pretty nice card. Ariane can really work quite well with it. It fits in, it fits in quite nicely with the theme of some Ariane decks. So. Yeah, I'd like to. I, I think that's quite good in one attack Ariane if there's a lot of Raptor going around because it really sways that matchup, which is already 50 50 in Ariane's favor. And I say 50 50 because me and Unforgiven tested with a sample size of about 30 games. So. Uh... There's that, but the, the point is here, what, what's, I'm laying down a Dust Devil, quite, you know, if you have it, you're probably going to do it. And then yeah, if you have it, you're going to play that chapter one, after. absolutely. Yep, fern Goblin Dust Devil is a very standard opening for the right Will my Fern hit anything? That's the question. And uh, I was not anticipating losing one attack here, that Ogre Brute surprised me a lot. And, I can uh, imagine so. <laughs> yeah, I do. Like, the Dust Devil coming up, I'm not going to have enough durability. You know, it's gonna, I'm going to use up all that durability fighting it now because my attack goes down by one. Yeah, it's actually not going to proc, which is really nice. Yeah, the, the spend effect doesn't resolve, and that's huge. You know, that's like, I've invested two cards would... into this effect, and it doesn't happen. Personally, as a player, um, I would have mulliganed for something other than a Dust Devil if going against an Ariane. Just personally. I don't particularly see the value in rushing the Dust Devil against an Ariane. I mean, Especially... she's, probably going to, she's probably playing one attack Ariane at the moment anyway, so unless she's using a spend on something like an animated book. I mean, that fern's going to be nice regardless. Yeah, but, yeah uh, it does hit. Yeah, that's, pr that's pretty sweet. That's a pretty nice fern. It's going to be 12 damage right there. Yeah, I agree with that. The fern's not over suggestions. Well, it was originally going to be 4 damage anyway, so he traded 8 for 8 from the uh, fern for himself. Yeah, there is that. As he was on to the base. Um, I forget what this deck is. I'm not sure if it's what I've <laughs> self-titled a Clown Fiesta deck, which runs lots of heals and has no win condition. I just love the deck. name of that deck. Yeah. <laughs> it's horrifying. <laughs> but uh, this deck, um, what we got here? Oh, no, I ran Dust, Dust Devils, didn't I? I think it was just a Grief Linzer that I queued up with. Yeah, I hadn't done much prep. Um, I've done a lot of prep with Unforgiven uh, recently. Yeah. Uh, okay. But for this one, yeah. So what do we have? We, uh... We've got Lady Heffin coming out. I mean, that's pretty nice. The thing with Lady Heffin is it kind of limits how many cards that you can play in that chapter yeah, in order exactly. to get its maximum advantage. I mean, if you keep your hand size pretty full, it can actually be a pretty huge swing. Yeah, exactly. As you can see, he, just looks, he looks reluctant on playing yeah, cards because I mean, he wants to get his big really as he can. Mind, he can't particularly afford to keep the amount of cards that he needs to make Heffin yeah. almost worth it. So I do think Rom is in quite a tough position here. I mean, we've got the tool belt, we've got the Goblin Raider, and the Repurpose coming out from yeah. Interjection. So it's a fairly standard, not a particularly Ariane-specific interaction-y round for Interjection, but it's still a nice little round for him. He's going to get that 12 armor and the tool belt, which is looking like yeah. it's going to be a miss here because he's just going for the Heffin. So exactly. we are going to see a heal of 14 come out, which is going to take it back up to 22. So actually, Rom has regained position relatively well, I'd say. Yeah. I completely agree. Yep, Mac. Uh, lots of life there. Uh, I didn't play the Dagonal Fledgling here, and I'm, I'm like drawing. I thought I need the cards if I need to find those heals if I'm going to do well. I'm going to have to find the KGP and get my attack back up. Uh, so I do end up playing that Fremenic Crafter because I figure if I don't get these cards, I, I'm going to have a tough time. I really need these extra I need to fill my hand up. Uh, unfortunately, take five. The effect does resolve though uh, because I still have a weapon, and uh, you know there's there's some cards. <laughs> We well, drew pretty well there with the two KPG agents, equally especially though, being at one attack. Uh, true. I'm glad. I'm glad I found it. But uh, you know, equally, I took five damage there, which is still a questionable decision, considering I'm up against Ariane. I, I want to be minimising uh, that as much as possible. But uh, seems to be seems to be okay, uh, considering what I've seen so far. All right. So, oh. uh, K K K slamming the KGB agent down there, uh, going to get back up to two. And uh, I'm getting, I think, well, that's a net gain. Oh no, I think, I, I think I'm going to get six health, but I'm not. Uh, so... okay, sorry about that. Slight net problems there. I am back over and the game is back up to date. Ah, well, no worries. Excellent. So yeah, I do, re I do notice in the end that I do need the second KGP agent. Uh, so there's that. And then I think I'd probably swap the Krasian and the Dagon off. Yeah, because I want to get that health sooner rather than later. And then I ignore the cards. I don't need them. So uh, Romley coming down. Do I even Romley first? I'll probably see. put it in slot one. Anyway, let's switch over to... Welcome back to what's his name and see what we've got. Crawling hand into Dr. Fenkenstrain. 
Yep. He's like he's trying to get that buff on that Frankenstein. So yeah. He didn't do any damage with that. Yeah, look, looking to you know use up the crawling hand in a meaningful way is like what else do you play? I think wind surge strike. I I, I think is also quite good there. I uh, wouldn't be too yeah, afraid of I taking damage from Frankenstein. I think you only save uh, a little bit of health, but you know that that does that that can matter. Oh. Looks like he's changed his mind and gone with fledgling. fledgling. Oh. <laughs> He's thinking about it. You know, and I think he it's a good a, choice, that thing is strange. You know, if that hits... Um, Definitely. You know, that can hit sometimes. I think that's going to land on your fledgling, but I believe you'll one-shot it regardless. Yeah, I'll, so... have, I'll have to attack this. So, sadly for Rom... Actually, no, it's going on the creature afterwards. I think it's going on fledgling. Oh, yeah, yeah that's, that's what you said. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like uh, the thing is, you know, having issues, I think. Yeah, yeah. that fledgling... My voice appears to be working again. Oh, welcome back. That Dr. Frankenstein is going to give him another three gold, which does help if he's going for the Earth Blast in his hand. Trick's creeping towards that uh, massive damage, and he, you know he does have it. We've seen that, and yeah. uh, it does play that Wind Strike that I mentioned as well. You know, going to get get my health down, uh, get me in range of the Earth Blast, and you know over the course of the game, that's what really this deck does. Is it you know tries to generate gold and deal a bit of damage to set up that uh, that sort of card that combos me out. Uh, gonna spend yeah. some of it on uh, some health and, and and damage here. The four damage quite relevant, uh, considering the strategy. Yes. The four armor. Doric is a really nice card. Still it's be nice in so many situations, which is fantastic. Definitely yeah. a top tier card. Oh yeah, Doric is a great card. Yeah, but uh, sadly for Rom, you know, I'm back on three attack. You know, I am. There could yep. potentially be another Ogre Brute, and I'm, I'm aware of that. But I'm gonna. I think in the end, I do take the risk on the two Dagonoff fledglings. Uh, to get that health up. I know I'm against Ariane, and at this point, you know, I haven't seen... I've seen some consistent damage, but I, I do suspect the possibility of, mm. you know, Earth Blasts. Uh, looks like I start with... Oh, yeah, I, I put Krasimor in the first slot to guarantee that I do kill that uh, with my three attacks since I am going first, and I, it doesn't get griefed by, you know, by, by an Uga Brute, so I'm going to get the most mm. risky card down first. But equally, gaining health first is also a good argument, but I think I'm in a safe, safe spot, so uh, I'm okay with that. Why would you... Rom is that alchemy in Rom's hand? Uh, yeah, that is that is alchemy. Mm, I would have. I don't think the Ali Morrison's a smart player then. No, he's going to lose that weapon uh, if he. Yeah. If, uh, I'd say so. But equally, could, uh, it's not that relevant that way. He does notice better. it, but the, you know, I think here the main reason he wants that is is, is really for the gold, isn't it? You know, to cast yeah, that earth blast with. Honestly, I'm fairly surprised by how passive this game has turned. It is. It's been very non-interactive for each player. He's thinking about that earth blast. Looks like he decides to go for the heal and the alchemy in the end. Yeah. Personally, I would have probably put the P on where the fledgling is just to get those two extra cards. Yeah, I would, next be, I would agree with that, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, I mean you're, against the Linz, you're against the Linzer with no weapon. There's not yeah, going to be exactly. that much damage coming your way. Yeah. Exactly. And my, my uh, game plan is to just uh, build up my health and armor and a bit of attack and lower their attack with things like Dust Devils and then go into the mm -hmm. final fight. That's what my, my game plan is. I'm, I'm looking to get there. So, you know, I'm not going to interact with his health at all, really. So his Dagonal Fledgling there uh, isn't going to be as useful as it could be. But certainly, quite nice drawing that other turn, with six health, and that you know that's absolutely something to Rom's credit planet. So. Yeah, you got quite a nice draw there, though. That fern is actually pretty useful. So is an ice warrior at this stage when you don't have a weapon. Oh, yeah. oh did I draw a fern? I was wondering what you, are you meant yeah, from you, the card. Yeah, you drew a fern. from the Krasian warrior. Oh yeah, yeah. I was yeah. like, what? We can't see my cards, <laughs> but yes, we. Like, <laughs> yeah, fern does come out. Alchemy, though, there it is, plus five gold in a. You know, it does spend the weapon. Uh, sadly, but you know, he's plenty of weapons in his deck, and uh, he's going to get up to that required goal for his Earth Blast. Uh, you're getting nice and high. Which is a very lucky thing that you healed that round, otherwise, that would have been a real problem for you. Yep. It would have been, yeah. You know, 20 damage, and I had, you know, what, 14 before the heals, something like that. But yeah. But chapter 5, here we go. And uh, I want to equip that, equip that to Katana, really. That, I think that's my game plan. I want to get that down to you know, get my attack really yeah. high and uh, guarantee sort of you know lots of extra damage in the final fight. Yes, it's vulnerable because I'm going first, but 50% of the time you get away with it. Mm -hmm. And then the other 50% of the time they usually don't have weapon removal anyway. Uh, and certainly that mm -hmm. is the case in, in the, with this, this, this hand he has. I'll switch over to Rom. I'm surprised that you're prioritizing the repurposes there against an Ariane, if I'm honest. I mean, I know that the Earth Blast is probably coming. But actually, it's not, which is whoa, yeah. really now, see, burning cards from the hand for that Earth Blast. Exactly, I was about to say the same thing. If I was Rom, I'd be doing Earth Blast first. Yeah, you need to Earth Blast first and just hope they thought they could invest in something and that it kills them. I mean, Realistically, that's the only real. I would have put the Haunted Soul after. I would have went Earth Blast Haunted Soul. Yeah, 
Actually, I if he's going for the skeletal peon, I probably would peon into Earth Blast in the soul. Yeah, quite. That extra two. And then but, uh, obviously... with a, like, why are you doing a KGP, essentially? There's there's no real reason to be doing it's a KGP. It's to dodge though. the two damage off the Haunted Soul by the looks yeah, of it, but the two damage isn't going to make the game. Yeah, at this stage of the game, it's irrelevant. Like, you need to win this chapter. Yeah. If you go to the final fight against the Lindsay, you can pretty much guarantee you're going to lose. Exactly. And yeah, so exactly. this is going to be 3-1 interjection. 3-1 in my favor, absolutely. Uh, the repurpose there, you mentioned, you know, it, it, of course, Ariane does do a lot of uh, health damage, and because of that, armor isn't as useful, but I had the 1-1 one, yeah. one weapon, and I thought, you know, I might as well spend it again. That's very true, you and might as well spend it. The armor, I still think, is is useful a lot of the time. Uh, certainly not yeah. as good as health, but uh, I had quite high health, and, you know, there's extra armor uh, in the final fight. Just make sure I uh, have the best odds or stats. Uh, Earth Blast does come down, and... Uh, two and eight ten damage but uh with my 11 attack weapon i do uh, clean them up in two hits and that does as you mentioned take the series yep there we go so that's gonna be three one interjection that is also unfortunately gonna be the last